to the vessel. One of the things I like about this image that pops out right away is the process. And we've got it in more of a high key, low key, uh, you know, format, not quite, but, you know, sort of there so that, you know, things like this are not, don't have a lot of contrast in them. So it makes the, 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 the lines that are occurring in the vessel itself stand out much more dom dominantly. And I think that helps uh, to simplify the busyness of what's going on here. It's very busy patterns everywhere. Uh, and with it being not in color, that can sort of, sort of complicate the presentation. But in your processing, you've done a very nice job of that. Um, one of the things I'm a big fan of is asking myself lots of questions. And that's probably going to be the biggest take home tonight is people to ask themselves more questions when they're taking images. Um, first thing I would like to ask is where do I start on the bottom with my base? On the bottom here, if you look, you've got a distinct area. I know you can't see what I'm pointing out, so I'm going to try to be a little more descriptive. Uh, you have distinct area on the bottom uh, section of the frame where you don't have the different blocks visible. It's one large block. So do you want to start with a clear border like that, or do you want to start inside the pattern itself? That's the first thing. The pattern that leads you in, would it be more dominant if you would get closer to that pattern, a little lower to the ground, making these initial blocks on the bottom stand out much bigger. Uh, the front ones would then discern very clearly from the ones further back because they'd be much larger. And would that change the perspective on the whole thing? The next thing I want to ask is when you look at your, your edges, you've got a great clean edge at the bottom left, at the bottom right, at the top right. And then at the top left, you're starting to include a little bit of something that kind of peaks in right here and it stays just that one little section. Does that help and is it important? Um, it's something you may want to consider cloning that out, easy to do, or more likely just, you know, you know, recomposing so it's not part of that. Um, Amazing. Winding path. We've got some very interesting light here. I do like your leading line. I love how you lead me right into two trees that are very dissimilar based on the amount of light that falls on them and the shadow that occurs on them. You see the tree in the middle has got a different shadow. Um, I think you've picked an interesting point to start your leading line with the use of shadow in the, in the foreground and you lead through well. You've kept me tight within the scene. Um, very nice job on exposure. Seven. Sunday walk. The use of the curve or your leading line, I do find this interesting, leading me into the into the image. Um, I, I will say I like the interaction between the two individuals, and I like the story it tells with the child being up three feet off the ground, but still shorter than I assume the father. Uh, I will look at some of the different elements in this image, and I look at exposure uh, and tonal range. In the tonal range, the shirt of the child is being lost against the dark tones in the background, as well as the sleeve of the father and front edge of the jacket getting lost in some of the, the darker tones in the background there. What could you do about that? Well, one of the things you could do is if you got a little bit lower, just by maybe six inches, this would, the hand, the arm would ride, ride up and you'd be able to see a little bit, you know, better the separation of the interaction between the two individuals. But this is really more an interaction shot than anything else. So I think some of the shadows and highlights would be helpful with this particular image. The next thing is we've alignment. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, we've got a pole coming right out of the father's head. Um, you know, so where do you stand? How do you position yourself left or right? Uh, you know, I think would be uh, helpful. Six. Cool. All right. Overall, I like this image very much. If the topic is, if the subject or assigned subject is leading lines, I think the leading line should have a fair amount of uh, impact in the image to contribute to the story, where I feel that this image is more a picture of the vessel with the accessory of the leading line 
Um, if you were to got lower to the ground, and this would all kind of be more dominantly pushing me into the vessel, I feel a little differently. I'm going to go with an eight. In this particular image, the leading line really takes you in and throughout this image. It brings you in, you're held in. I like how you've cropped the top of the trees. You've got a great spacing on the right side of the big trunk on the, on the right, as well as the, the, the left side. Um, I'm going to give this the nine. Okay, sign B, leading line, honorable mention. Walk to the vessel, Bill Hansen. And equal merit, winding path, Emma Tager. And Cranford Milburn assigned A, leading lines. Perfecting leaning. I guess you're pretty open with your definition of leaning line because it is a line pretty much and it is leaning, but not leading. So it's uh, not a leading line. Unless you want to talk about vertical, it's leading me up to the bird. So are we pretty open in interpretation? It's okay. ultimately up to you. All right, let's 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 leave it open to interpretation. I, I'm always of the opinion, though, if you don't think it meets the definition, I think it's better to DQ than give it a poor score. I, I, I definitely would not DQ this image. Where no birds or animals allowed in or people. Well, let me ask a question: Is it really an image of a bird, or is a bird just an accessory piece in the image? Again, I'm just asking. Well, I know when we because we had people in the last set of images. Hold on one second, because okay. I'll, okay. I'll admit I haven't looked at the, the definition I recently. Actually, yes. <laughs> yes. But I yes. Even, I didn't even realize it. Says Animal no birds and people are not permitted. Okay. At all? As or as a main focal point? It says the image must contain at least one leading line. Animals, birds, and people are not permitted. That's all it says. People. Interesting. I, just, I didn't I catch that. <laughs> Ellen, do you want to weigh in on this? <laughs> People thing. I mean, the last picture had people in it, but two of the last. Yeah. Um. Well, <laughs> I guess we can go with a more liberal definition. Okay. And are we gonna kind of overlook the the people and birds thing? I mean, yeah, that might be unnecessary anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, in all fairness to everybody, if the image is really about a bird or a person and not so much the leading line, it's not going to get scored so well in this competition. So I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Mm -hmm. um, I do think this is a very nice image. It's pretty simplistic. Uh, I, I like the way it's composed and, and broken up. I think the, the atmosphere conditions bring attention to what's in the foreground. Um, it is linear in its format and it does lead and it leads me up to a bird. It's not really necessarily an image of the bird. I find the bird to only be an accessory piece for this particular image. So uh, I'd like to see it again, uh, seven. Mortar bunker. Very nice use of light in this image. Uh, you know, you've got one area on that left wall that is in different light than everything else that we could see, and it is not blown out or overexposed. So I give a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a, a bow to the maker to really uh, keep that, you know, in the tonal range of what your camera can capture. Uh, I do think it has a very strong use of leading line, not only in the, the tracks, but in the walls. Okay, everything leads me into a very interesting part in the middle of the frame. It's not directly in the center, not that it can't be, but I do kind of like the way it's composed with the spacing on the top between the, whatever this may be, I was at one point, a doorway or a window at the top. Um, one question I would ask myself, and it's not in the scoring is, where would I place this crack in the, in the ground? 
Would I like it closer to the bottom, closer to the middle, right where it is, um, or eliminate it altogether? It's fine for me the way it is, but it's something that I would absolutely be thinking about when I capture it to make sure it's where I want it. Seven. Roller coaster. So here's a question to your rules committee. This is lacking fine detail. And I'm not even so sure it's very, it's totally in focus. Abstractly, it looks very cool. What's, what is allowed in this category? Is it more abstract or more true to form? She said to be creative. Yeah, I don't think it's... Um... I think either one should be allowed. Okay. Um, I just want to go by your rules. Yeah, because okay. I, I don't think reading um, lines lies one way or the other on that personally. But yeah, creative is fine okay. um, as long as it has leading lines in it. I do like the composition very much. I like the position of your your car. Um, the action that's going on. You know, we do have a leading line in this curve that starts in the lower left and kind of leads yourself up. I try and decide whether I like the out of focus, not fine detail aspect of this or not. Um, I, th I think I'm gonna go with a six. A winter sunset on a cloudy bay. We have a very simple composition. It makes the pilings stand out very nicely against the background. I kind of wonder if we have maximized their presentation. You know, they're kind of void of detail. Uh, what could we do to bring out a little bit more detail? We're kind of really running into each other over here. See how you've got the separation over here, which looks nice. If you took a step or two, like a four or five feet to the left, would you separate some more of these and give you a little bit more of a cool anatomy within your main structure? Would I get lower to the ground to eliminate some of the dead space that's created? You know, the whole top of the frame is devoid of much, a hint of, you know, uh, you know, clouds. You don't have much of anything going on in the water except for a hint of some ripples and color changes. With that being said, if I got lower to the ground, I could eliminate some of the dead space here, some of the dead space here, some up there, and still kind of get the same point across. Because right now I've got the pier, it leads me to something that it overlaps on and I can't really make out what's here or to separate the pier from if this is a rock or whatever this may be over here. Six. Trade Center. I do find your composition to be pleasing. Uh, I think you've cropped the skyline in an interesting point, just devoid of anything, just devoid of anything coming in. I think the balance between the Freedom Tower and this, these buildings over here with the pier on the right side worked very well. I don't get as strong a sense of leading line here. We've got a pier that really isn't, you know, it's almost on a diagonal, almost straight. Uh, it doesn't really necessarily lead me into the city itself. So under the definition of leading line, I think we're falling a little bit short. The other thing I'd like to say is the time we took this picture was when the sky has gone to black. And by doing so, the camera sensor really struggles with the tonal range. Your eye sees 35 to 40 shades of brightness to darkness. It can pull out detail uh, very well, but your camera sensor can only do six to seven. So as you can see, we're pretty much pushing the limit on the white tones right here, but yet the black tones, we can't, the building looks like it's missing on the lower right, it's missing again here into the sky, here again, the Freedom Tower, we have it, we lose it, we have it. Um, so usually that dark blue uh, will be a better time to bring out definition 
in all aspects of your viewfinder from building to building. The buildings are all emerging because it's so dark. You know, six. Walking away from the lighthouse. We have a very pleasing leading line. I do like the balance of the left side of the frame to the right side of the frame compositionally. You've got your dominant leading line here. It starts to curve over. A good anchor point for your lighthouse on that side. And I really like uh, the, 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 the fence kind of and uh, rope or chain or whatever this may be kind of leads me in also. I do feel that this image struggles in its processing. Uh, we've, we could balance the light tones and the dark tones better to get some, some detail in here. You know, your sky is kind of bright and takes away a lot of attention, but more so your road is just about on the verge of being overexposed. Um, so I, I would like to see you, you know, tone it down a little bit. And we might have a little bit too much yellow in the grass, grasses in your color. Uh, six. The line. Compositional elements, as far as geometrically go, I like the way things are placed in the frame. I think you have an interesting anchor point here. Um, I like this being not in the middle. I like, you know, the rope coming in. I like the way the light changes from this, the right part of which red to the left side of which red. I'm going to ask, do I like having such an out of focus piece of wood on the right side? that this rope emerges from. I can't really tell the interaction of the rope and what it's coming from, you know, behind. Um, I'm not so sure that that works for me so much. Um, what could you do about that? Would I move to the left and take it on more of a diagonal to get some separation? Maybe it'll, it'll simplify where the rope comes from. Maybe I need more space. I just feel like this out of focus part over here is struggling with the rest of the image a little, little too much. And also get a great sense of leading line. We have almost a horizontal rope, which is linear in shape, but it comes out of nowhere and disappears into nowhere. And what is it leading me to? I'm not really sure. Six. Along the walkway. Very nice balance in this image. I like how you lead me through the image. I like your little landing area here. The position of this off to one side works well. I think you've included enough on the left side to kind of take me into this image well. Uh, smartly, you have a sky that's gonna be an exposure nightmare uh, without doing multiple exposures and you've kind of just about cropped it out and minimized it. So I think that works well. Um, I would consider toning down some of the bright areas a little bit. We're a little bright over here, but we're definitely a little washed out up in here. Um, strong enough to see again, seven. You know, overall, nice feel, very good composition. I think it stands out and gets his background very much. And the line that's here does lead me into something of interest, and it's not a bird shot. So, uh, give this a nine. Nine. Seven. Well, signed A, meeting line, honorable mention, along the walkway, Wendy Kaplowitz. And equal merit, perfecting leaning, Charlene Federowitz. 
Mortar Bunker, Jim Chalan. Cranford Milburn assigned Salon, leading line. The eyes have it. Color and pattern work very nicely here. Um, as far as in a category of leading line, you could argue that the arches lead you into the center, but the way it's processed, it kind of becomes very jumbled and hard to discern layers uh, fairly clearly. Uh, we do have the inclusion of this line that comes in. In submission, it looks like this is suspended. The, the whole this and the people on uh, that are at home. The purple section of this, uh, it, what you're actually looking at, the image you're looking at, is suspended amongst this big black void on both sides because we don't have a little border that separates. This so my eye knows where your image begins and where the outside edges of projection uh, begin and end, which makes this look kind of small in the frame. I would suggest a thin white border around to let the viewer know just the way a mat would be on a print in a museum or a frame to kind of let you know, you know, where the image begins or painting begins and where it ends. Um, six. Fern leaves. You've got gorgeous light on this. I love what you did with the process. Your dodging and burning has really created um, a lot more interesting pattern than would have been if this was all processed very evenly. What do I mean by that? Look at look at what's in the background. It's it's a dark and it's in a different different shape. And then this is a little darker on the edges at the top left and the top right, and it gets brighter in the middle. And I love the position at the junction of the thirds where you put your your vertical main strut of the palm. Um, Exquisite processing, seven. Wall Street Christmas tree. So for this particular image, I do like the use of the leading line that's taking me into the image and we're getting into this tree itself. Um, your sides also bring you in. I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. One, this is really about leading line. Again, you've, you've, you've showing me this in the way you're presenting it. Are we maximizing the presentation of the leading line? Or would it look cooler if we got lower to the ground? So they weren't all almost the same size uh, squares, uh, you know, the ones closer to me would be more dominant. I think that would be helpful. The next thing I want to ask is, is there strength given to the overall composition of whatever this red paint or orange paint is on the ground on the right side? Does that add a purpose or is my eye being drawn to it? I don't understand it. The one on the right's taking me out of the frame or would I eliminate that? How would I eliminate that? Well, you know, the easiest way to eliminate that would be to take three feet closer to the tree. And if you got lower to the ground, you would just totally eliminate that and get that out. So that's why I'm a huge fan of using the tripod, because when I look through all aspects of the viewfinder, I can ask myself questions like that. Is there anything that's detracting from my, my point of impact that I'm trying to make? Is there something that I can use to strengthen it? And I think it would be helpful. Six. This way to one world. The diagonal nature that you have taken this image, I think really makes the image awesome. Um, look how you lead in from the top right. I love this vertical strut off center. Uh, the main one on the right, um, you know, with spacing at the top left works well. I love how you lead me in. If you want to put these at the corner, so be it. Doesn't matter to me. Um, I do like some of the little nitpicking things, like the separation between on the right side. You know, uh, you know, you got your gray wall that's here. I'm, I know you can all see this, but they can't. That's why I'm 
talking talking this way. Um, this gray wall on the right side, and then that little circular where the where the strut comes into the wall. You separate that. I think that works great. The only thing I would ask is when to press the shutter. Would I press it when those two individuals are that far away? so that they're smaller in the frame because they're the one black thing other than the sign which is almost black at the top left that stands out so well they're also kind of merging with i assume that's people off in the distance would this look a little stronger if one or both of them were a little closer to the camera um food for thought seven a room of mirrors You know, it's, um, I like the way you've composed it. As far as leading lines go, it's more like layering effect to me than leading lines, but I guess you could push the, the interpretation of, you know, the layers are leading me into, uh, you know, this person taking the image, which I, I so we're going to let that go for the particular comp competition. You know, I'm looking at what's in focus and what's not in focus. Uh, you know, I don't feel the foreground appears to be in focus, the foreground layer, and I'm not even so sure the, the second layer is or isn't. Um, then I do believe we're in focus. We have great detail in the in the people as far as, you know, I get a swatch of red in her, in her shirt and his hair and her hair. Um, we have a color cast. You can see it in the skin tones. Does it serve a purpose or not? Six. Bug light. So we have a very pleasing lead into this image. I like how it takes me to the lighthouse. I'm going to ask myself some questions. Look at the balance of the image. We've got a tall vertical strut on the left, which I think is really cool. Um, and it leads me into this lighthouse, which is in the center. And so does this line leads me from right to left. So pretty much we have a void at the top right that's only filled in with the only thing that I find interesting is the cloud pattern that's blue that kind of separates from the rest of the sky that brings me in. So I don't want to eliminate that. So I've got this area on the right on the land, which is okay, not super great. What can I do about that? I do like the curve. So if I move further into the image, I would lose some of the curve effect that takes me through. How about if I got further away from the fence and more toward the right side of this, would it, how would it present? I don't know. I'd stand there and try that and see if that would pull the lighthouse more over to the right. Um, and it would keep me with more interest throughout this image. Would I get lower to the ground so I'd be devoid of some of the space at the top? I think that would give more dominance to the, to the, the granite or whatever stone this may be. And the last question I would ask is vertically, also in reference to vertical, I've got the top leading line of the fence, right? And it takes me down, takes me down, and then it merges with the horizon line of the land. And I can't separate them. Does that add strength to the overall composition? How do I separate those? Either get higher or get lower. And here, I think getting lower would be your answer. So, six. On the down line. Yeah. Smoke and the plane, they, they work very well in wh whatever you want to say, what is leading to what. But um, I think it works very well compositionally. Your exposure is really nicely done. I believe, for my taste, what really makes this image work is your choice of shutter speed. If you use too fast of a shutter speed, then it looks like the plane is just suspended and hovering and it's not really happening. Um, and, you know, you've got motion blur in the propeller, propellers, which really answer that problem for me. So I think a uh, shutter speed of which is probably somewhere in the range of 250th of a second, uh, uh, 
250 to a second or something like that really helps. Be careful of dust spots. You've got a dust spot in your frame just above the, the wing tip on the left. Uh, I don't know that that's a, a sky. I think that's more of a dust spot, uh, but really nice image, seven. Things are looking up. I really like the placement of the point of the convergence. How the trees lead me up to something that is off center, I think works great. It's off center left to right, with less space over here, more over there. You have a little bit more dominant trunk than you do anywhere else, and I think that works very well. The interplay between the dominant trunk on the lower right and the one tree that's kind of different than everything else at the top left that's coming in on more of a diagonal, like it's actually has partially fallen, I think balance out very nicely. Would I or would I not get the camera closer to the trunk that's in the foreground to make it stand out even more uh, with more dominance than the rest of the trunks? Something to think about, but I think it works absolutely nicely the way you've done it. Seven. Tracks. I appreciate the thought process of the maker here. You've not only have these tracks that kind of lead me into the image, but you've also got, you know, a railing that's kind of leading me in. You've got, you know, the, the poles that kind of lead me in, the top of the building leads me in. So compositionally, I think that works very nicely. Um, some of the things that you've done and maybe on purpose, maybe not on purpose is include a little spacing between the big dominant pillar on the left that's rust colored and the spacing of which to the left of it behind it. I think that makes that separate a little out, out a little nicely, as well as if you take where the tracks lead you into, you've got a little tighter pattern of a metal framework that separates from the building just a little bit. So I think you've laterally moved in a, in a good position. Would I or would I not include a little bit more of the railing because it kind of comes in and goes right back out of the image? Something I, it depends on what's on the right side of your frame if I would include a little bit more. The next thing is, would I include the bottom left, this structure that's right at the bottom left corner or not? It's taking on an identity that keeps pulling my eye to that bottom left corner. If you pick your hand up and you crop it off with your fingers, I think it presents a little nicer. Uh, if you just eliminate that little part at the bottom. Um, seven. GW Bridge. Compositionally, this works very nicely. I think the pillar in the foreground its dominance in the way it's cropped, seeing only partial of it, partial of it, and so big, works very nicely with the whole the whole vertical uh, pillar in the background. Um, I think it, you lead me through nicely with the road, with the the main cables. I like where you cropped it on the right side. The one thing I will say about the image is that you've elected to use a slow shutter speed, which gave you the effect of the streaking car lights on the upper level and the lower level. How do they present? Are they a little flat in their processing or do they have more of a dominant vibrancy? I, I think we can afford to bring out the color in them a little bit more and they're gonna separate from the business of the structure of the bridge a little bit better. Um, you know, how would you do that? Well, one of the ways you could do that easily is in the levels window, just moving the, the, uh, the, the triangle on the right side of a levels window in Photoshop uh, from right to left would make that brighter. You're not looking for any detail in there, so they can afford to be a little bit brighter. If you like it in the reds, but not so much in the yellows, in the, in the white lights, which are coming toward the cars coming toward you, you can erase or partially erase the opacity of that part of your levels adjustment, and that would help. Eight. Of seven, I mean, says. This way to hope. Uh, 
we have a little bit more of a central nature of this um, leading me into the middle, which, you know, that's okay. That's fine. I do kind of feel though that the, uh, the image delves partially into the realm of abstraction where you're not getting very, very good detail or separation. Some of the, the darker cluster of tones. Um, so it becomes more of an overall pattern than anything. I think what gets me more than anything is the flat processing and how we're brighter along the perimeter than we are in the middle of my eyes working its way out to the periphery more than it is toward the center of the frame. So I would just change the processing a little bit. I think it would be helpful. Six. Old glory. There's something of interest everywhere throughout the frame. The little spacing of things like separation between the flag post and this, this you know, main cable running uh, uh, into, the, into the frame works out very nicely. You know, I like how the left side of the cables and the right side of the cables take on two different identities, whether it be in the cables themselves, then what presents in the two uh, dome-shaped areas of the top of the, the, the bridge itself. The processing, I think, is a little it's a little bit odd. And what do I mean by that? We have areas we've got a fair amount of contrast, and then we have areas where we don't have a fair amount of contrast, like in the flag itself. Um, The next thing is, look at the change in the color of the sky. Bright here and not as bright there. And then it's, this balances that. Is there one section that's brighter than everything else? Perhaps it was, I wasn't standing there, but if that's something you're controlling, it's just making it look a little bit odd. Seven. Locomotive. has an interesting old world feel to it. I do like compositionally where you placed your elements, enough space to on the track on the left to lead me back in and again in the second tier. And then, you know, your spacing of the tower on the left, a little bit of the building on the right. I would say that we've got a uh, tonal range here where we've got no detail on the dark tones and no detail on the white tones. So with that being said, does it work as strongly as a high key, low key image? And I almost looks like part of the train is floating because I can't see, you know, a grounding point separation. So I just struggle more than anything with the, the front of the bottom of the train, as well as the brightest parts of the image, which are some of the buildings in the back that my eye goes to that really doesn't have much of interest. Um, six. BMX rider. You know, in this particular image, does the line really add any kind of strength to the overall final message, the line in the, in the, in the dirt? I don't quite think so. Um, the next thing is the processing is definitely uh, skewing from normalcy, and I don't really find it so much an abstract presentation. You don't have a good black point in, in a lot of the image. It's flat in its processing. Um, six. Our Lady of Fatima. The abstract nature of this presentation is very interesting. Uh, in regards to leading lines, um, I'm not seeing a very, there are lines everywhere, but are they really telling a story or adding strength or drawing me to anything? The only place I can really argue that is just below the, the crucifix, you've got some lines leading me in. Otherwise, the lines are kind of leading me out of the frame, uh, you know, whether it be the stairs or the vertical pillars. Um, six. 
9-11 Memorial. I do like your composition. I like what's happening here. Um, as far as your use of foreground, I think it works very well. As far as a category that we're gonna call leading lines, do the lines lead us to anything? The peripheral lines lead us out of the frame. The bright lines lead us to nothing. The line going from the edge of this uh, fountain, whatever you want to call it, pond, I don't know, I don't know what the proper term is. You know, it's just kind of coming horizontal across. So I don't really feel a strong correlation for leading lines. Um, six. This way to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Excellent job with your processing. This is not an easy exposure to capture and a lot of work went into getting it to come to fruition in the computer. So hats off to you, uh, whoever you may be. Um, I'm going to say that I, I do like what you're doing in the, the dark areas of the, the landing, uh, the set of second floor, I assume it's the second floor. I think it's placed very well in the frame. I love the arches, how they come in. I like that it's off center. I think you could do it either way, on center, off center. The next thing I would say is, you know, if you look at your left edge, you've got a little bit of, you know, vertical strut on the, on the left. And then you've got a broader area with not much happening on the right side. Would I take a little bit off of that with that add more interest. I probably would take a little sliver off of that. Um, just food for thought again. Seven. Bethesda Arcade. This particular image does lead me throughout very nicely. You, your ceiling lines bring me in, your wall lines, your, your floor lines. Let me ask you a question. You've got this centered in the frame. The three art, for the people who can't see what I'm pointing to, the three arches are centered in the frame. Would it look better with them in the center or if we would make a distinction on what do we like better, the floor tiles or the ceiling tiles. What's more interesting? I think the ceiling tiles are more interesting. Would I eliminate the floor tiles? Heck no. But could I make this so it's not so centered and a little more static in its presentation? And the answer is absolutely. And how can I do that? I would like to give more dominance to the ceiling tiles. They've got a lot more going on, especially with the reflections and the lighting. Um, so what would I do? To show more of them, I'd have to eliminate more of the floor, but then I wouldn't have the leading line. But if I got lower to the ground, then I would still have a cool leading line in the ground. We don't have a lot of much going on anywhere else in the ground. And then I could show more ceiling. And then these three, three arches would not be in the center of the frame. It would change the overall balance, change the perspective. It would strengthen what's coolest is that's the ceiling and still show you know, the, the perspective and minimize what's not as cool, which is the floor. The next thing is we're kind of on the left side, getting a little void of detail on the left. That would be minimized by getting lower to the floor, perhaps taking a step closer. Um, strong enough to see again, seven. Welcome. Overall, a very pretty image. Um, as far as leading lines go, uh, we do have lines in this, but are they truly leading lines? Um, I, I can't say that they are leading lines. Um, I don't feel they're leading me to the flowers. If you want to make an argument that they're leading me to the vertical uh, post, you know, what does that mean? I'm, I'm you know, I. I do really like your image. I just don't think in leading lines, it, it quite makes the cut six. I would absolutely use this in a pictorial competition. Harvard lineup. Hmm. 
Your diagonal nature and presentation does lead me in and throughout this image. Again, I'm going to ask myself questions. If the one take home message tonight that you take home, who cares what score is given out? It's irrelevant. It's just my opinion. And what does that mean? Nothing unless you're my mother. So I'm going to ask myself, what is, what are the dominant elements of this image? I think you made it very clear that it's the propellers, right? Because you've only cropped out the planes to show me mostly the front of the planes. And now these propellers lead me through. The propellers connected to the engine. Can I really see a clear demarcation of that interaction? The answer is no. The propellers are kind of vertical and thin on my frame. I've got, you know, the first one, which is cool and all of that. And they kind of start to merge together as I move to the left side of the frame. What could I do about that? If I took a step or two to the left or and got closer, I can make this big and dominant in the foreground and still show the tires. And then it would separate these a little bit more if I got further to the left. I see a little bit more of what you're just starting to tickle me with right up here, which is part of the cockpit. I think that might be helpful. Um, this image has a color class. Look at the color of the grasses. Six. Nine. Nine. Nine, eight, seven, eight, Eight, nine, eight, side of the line, leading line, honorable mention, things are looking up, Natalie Gregoria. GW Bridge, Ryan Kirshner. Old Glory, Peter Schmeichel. Bethesda Arcade, Peter Schmeichel. Equal Merit, Fern Lee, Zellen Stein. This Way to One World, Lenny McDonald. On the down line, Ron Deck. This way to enlightenment, Lenny McDonald. So now we have our open competitions. Uh, there's only one photo in this uh, particular contest. Upper Milburn, Open B. Color Trio. Overall, this image has a very pleasing feel to it. I like how the colors change through the kaleidoscope from left to right and how they reflect in the glasses. I will... The distortion in the vertical lines through the liquid uh, stand out very nicely against the vertical lines in your background. Uh, two things about this image. One, would it be a little more dynamic if all the levels of water were not the same, just to change it up so something was different? And you could do that many different ways, whatever appeals to your taste. I think that would be helpful because right now we've got a background that other than color change is pretty uniform. What happens in the liquid is pretty uniform other than color change. 
We have three glasses that are the exact same, you know, uh, glass, all positioned the same way in the frame. So the one thing that could really change and stand out and take on a strong identity would be changing, you know, the, the, the level of liquid in one or all three glasses, however your vision shows you. Um, the next thing is, look how it looks like the top left in particular and part of the top of the image all the way around uh, is missing from the image, making it look a little odd. And again, a thin white border, I think would be very helpful in letting the viewer know exactly where your image begins and where it ends. Seven. Now we gotta give it a something, right? Or well, you want me to go the way it is? <laughs> but that was just for the first round, right? Yeah, that was the first round. I'm gonna give it an eight as an overall. Okay. Okay, so open B, and we have an honorable mention for Color Trio, Bill Hansen. Okay. Jennifer Milburn, open A. Limbo. So the interplay between the bricks on the left and the bricks on the right, I think work out very nicely. Um, I really like the missing window panes and the pattern that's created with the ones that have glass and the ones that don't. I am going to ask, is there, and I like the fact that it's off centered so that we've got more of the inter more interesting bricks than we do of the pattern that is a little bit more monotonous because you know, it's not all changed up in texture and color, uh, you know, as you can see on the left two thirds of the frame. I will ask what is more interesting, the brick section below the window or the curved brick section at the top of the window with the top of the window having the curve would probably add something more than true vertical and linear patterns. We could have all some gentle curve, which I think would add a little bit more dynamics to the final feel for this. So again, things I would think about when I'm capturing and, and then you shoot it the way you like. Um, what you never want to do is be in a position if the maker right now sits here and says, yeah, you know what, maybe I, you're right, maybe I should have done that. You never want to be in that position. So the more questions you ask when you capture, the better off you're going to be in the long run. If you like it the way it is, then that's the way it goes. Um, seven. Dead of winter. You know, selective focus really brings the attention right where you want it. Um, I think you've got beautiful muted colors, beautiful muted light. Uh, you've got a line that kind of leads me into the stem, leads me into a centered, centered leaf, and then we don't have much going on anywhere else. Would I consider taking that leaf off center, maybe getting rid of some of the top and some of the left? Would that add more dynamics? I'd play around with it and see which way I like it the best. What I don't understand is we've got this blotchy appearance to some of the frame, especially on the right side adjacent to the leaf. Um, it looks like it's manipulated in some way, shape, or form, uh, but it just looks like an unnatural looking, uh, you know, either blur or clone or something. Um, six. Japanese garden. So for this particular image, you saw something of interest that, that you were interested in. You saw the two potted areas um, and their stands and uh, the separation between the two. And you wanted to show them to me. And I appreciate that. I'm going to start asking myself some creative questions as far as composition goes. One is we've got a structure to the right side of the frame. We've got a structure to the left side of the frame. So we've got something on both sides. What do we have in the middle? I know we kind of get lost into a background that's far away. And 
Uh, that's the first question. Do I like the way they're lined up or not? The next thing is when I get to the second layer, which would be right here, these, these bright rocks that are overexposed, they're kind of merging with the, the, the plant on the left side and the planter. Uh, do I want to reposition them so they're either blocked out by the plant or have them have more of an identity and get them into the center part between the two sections of plants? Um, the next thing I'm going to ask myself is how do the potted plants on the stands in the foreground separate from the greenery in the background? And they really merge together and they don't take on a great identity. It's hard to tell where, you know, the, the potted plant and ends and the background trees begin, especially over here on the left side. Take a look at that. So what do I do with that? Well, you could do certain things. One is you could start using a shallower depth of field to keep your attention on the two potted plants that you like. Was that this great depth of field? Now the background and the foreground start to really compete with each other for identity uh, and attention. Uh, would I change my angle of view so I didn't have something on the left, something on the right that leads me into something that's not quite, not quite as interesting in the center of the frame? Um, and then I would definitely watch in your process and you have a sky that's totally bald back up in here. You've got rocks that are blown out. So my suggestion is on the back of your camera, one of the best tools we've ever gotten in photography in the last 25 years is a histogram. Have your histogram showing on the back of the camera. I have mine split for I can see a histogram and I can see the LCD. In the LCD image, I have the blinkies on. So it's ever blown out on the hi highlight side is blinking. So I know what it is and I know, do I want to change my exposure or not? Um, here, you're going to have a hard time getting detail in the dark tones if you're going to bring detail into the sky. So you either need to take more than one exposure. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to be so easy because of the tight little patterns you have everywhere up in here, or I'm going to try to eliminate the sky in my image and recompose this a different way. And you got to watch when you're blinkies, because if this is lit up, you're going to blow this out. You're never bringing out detail. You're never bringing back detail. So you want to expose this so that if it's important in the frame, you don't want it riding up the right side of your frame in your histogram. So you have to decrease your exposure to do that. Here, you're going to have a hard time because of this, the dark areas. You already can't tell where the pot is. It kind of disappears. So this is a, a difficult tonal range to handle in one exposure the way you have it composed. Six. Bubbly bubbles. So the selective focus is kind of interesting. It keeps my attention more on one section of a fairly monotonous pattern. Do we have a pattern that's created throughout this image? Well, you've got larger bubbles and smaller bubbles. You have a darker overall tonal range and a lighter overall tonal range. So what becomes my focal point and where is positioned in the frame? Well, here you've got the center portion of the lighter, brighter bubbles, small, smaller, brighter bubbles, and the darker ones in the background. You've got a bleb on the left that doesn't even look like a bubble. It's the only thing that doesn't look like a bubble in the lower left corner. Does it serve a purpose? Or does it look like it doesn't belong? If you're keeping me inside the bubbles, then keep me inside the bubble section. If you're going to include something else, does it detract or add strength? And here I think it detracts. So what I would recommend is I don't have a problem with selective focus, but I would make something be a focal point and I would position that somewhere in the frame where it's of interest. Not all the time, but often, if you break your image up vertically and horizontally into thirds, at the junction of the thirds is a great place to put a focal point. Here's junction, almost junction of a third, great place to put a focal point. Is that or that a focal point? Absolutely. It stands out very well against everything else, right? But then it would have to be in focus. So I think if you got a little tighter, change your focusing point. Because right now you're focused right down the middle and not up top, not on the bottom. It makes it look a little static again. It's kind of flat plane. Doesn't really add so much to perspective. Um, six. Mirror, mirror. Very pleasing overall scene. Again, 
I'm going to talk to myself, and mainly because nobody else wants to talk to me, as you all probably feel as the night's going on. <laughs> and I'm going to ask myself, why am I taking this picture in the first place? What are my focal points? Well, we've got a really cool cluster of three trees in your foreground. You've got another cool section of color in the background. You've got an interesting reflection. We all see that, right? So where do we position them in the frame? Well, right now you've elected to take us as a vertical. And by doing so, you've got me equidistant in sky and reflected sky. So it makes it look like I've got a centered image that kind of falls off into almost no detail. The same thing on the bottom. Does that add strength to the image? Or would I keep myself, well, not keep myself, my goal is to make you, the viewer, appreciate what I just did. So really, not am I only shooting for myself, I'm really shooting for the viewer because I'm trying to impress the person who views my image. It may only be me, but I'm trying to impress somebody. So right now, what's of real interest is this right in here and now right in there. I think the sky is nice. I think the reflection is kind of getting kind of lost. Would I commit more to one or the other if I wanted to show sky? And I would. I would make a distinction on Let's take this so it's not so centered and say, what's more interesting, the sky reflection or the sky? And for me, it's the sky. So I would eliminate the sky reflection. Boom, my picture gets cropped right there. The next thing I would say, is this a vertical or is this a horizontal? Or is it a square? I don't think it's a vertical. I think it's absolutely horizontal. And I think you can also make this a square format if that's what you wanted to do. The next thing I'm going to ask is, Look at my edges. You've got a tree that comes up high over here and it looks all right. How does it look in the reflection? It takes on a strong identity to the lower right and leads me out of the frame. I don't think it belongs there. So again, if I wanted to show it at the top, I would eliminate it at the bottom. I don't think it's helpful. The next thing is all about trees and everything and you've got the bench. Anything else man-made in here that you think may or may not be helping your image? Do you like that? I don't think that helps. What do you do about that? Easy clone later on if you don't want to crop it out. What about that little white sign that's right there or bright colored sign? Does it help? I'm a detail guy. I'm going to notice that. I would clone that out. Um, easy fix. The next question I'm going to ask is, would I want to spend a little more time separating the grass line with the bottom of the tree line? And I think this is an image. I would get lower to the ground again. And by doing that, I would separate those two. It will make them stand out better. I can get closer to the water, show as much water, but eliminate, eliminate how much space it takes in my frame and still show the same intent. Um, by getting lower, I'd even eliminate some of the reflection of the sky. Seven. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, you give your sevens awards, right? No. Or in the first round. In the, but, once, but once, if it stays a seven, it still gets an honorable mention? Yeah. Weren't you doing that earlier? No. Yeah. No? The eights, the eights okay. Seven. Mentions. Okay. Okay, so for some clubs do that. Um, some don't. I don't think seven should, if it stays a seven, it should get an award. But I just want to know what you were doing. So for here... Again, I'm going to ask myself, what is it about this image that drew me to take this picture? Is it the texture in the ground? If it is, could I maximize it and make it not look so monotonous all the way through? And that would be getting lower to the ground. Um, if you could, if you possibly could do that. If you're shooting over a wall, you may not be able to. Although with the viewfinders now, the LCDs that pop out and you could pop them on a 90 degree angle, you can hold your camera down without even getting low and see what you're doing instead of laying on the ground. You may be able to do something with this. What are my main elements? The two main rocks? What about the third structure in the background? If I took a step to the left, would I separate this from that? Because right now they're overlapping and merging. I don't think that really helps uh, your final presentation. If you follow your, your textures, they're nice and, and they were uniform throughout. And then at the over here, you've got a little bit of different direction. Does that serve a purpose? Does it help? Would I show more of it? Would I eliminate it? Uh, I don't think we have enough for it to hold space to occupy that. I would cl clone it out or show, show more of it. Six. Electrified atmosphere.
Well, it tells a very good point in time. The action is uh, intense. Um, you know, the hand of the referee is great. Uh, you know, this is something you're not going to get a chance to do anything about. It falls the way it falls. If you could see the face of the referee really intently waiting for those shoulders to get on that floor for those couple of seconds is the whole story. It would be even stronger, but you can't really control that per se, unless you have another frame where this hand is in a different position. Um, and hopefully you're on motor drive at this kind of impact. Your spacing everywhere is great. Um, lighting is great. Seven. Cabana's on the beach. So we have things of interest here. We've got textures in the sand, leading lines in the sand. We've got cabanas that, that move in. Where are they leading me to? Some bright structure, I can't tell what it is, and it's the brightest thing in the frame almost. Uh, it's also broad without much detail. Um, so something to consider, would I do something about that or not? The next thing is, what is that? Does it help? Is it a good foreground element? Would I eliminate it by cloning it, getting moving it, getting repositioning myself? Um, could I, am I maximizing my elements? What are my elements? We've got the leading line, we've got the cabanas. Uh, the leading lines are these. If we got lower to the sand, you're gonna bring life to this. Do we have enough texture in the sand? Well, look at the angle of the light. The light is coming straight down. We should look at the shadows. So we're at a time of day where lighting is not really helping us. And by doing so, you can see you've lost detail in some of the dark tones, and you're just about at the point of blowing out some of your light tones. So earlier or later in the day with lighting like this is going to add more strength to this. It's also going to, more importantly, bring out much more texture in the sand as the shadows increase. I would also consider adding a lot more contrast in only the sand, not in the top part of the frame, the cabanas or sky. I think that would be helpful. Six. Eight. Seven. Nine. Hey, open A, honorable mention, Limbo, Charlene Federowitz. And equal merit, electrified atmosphere, Charlene Federowitz. And for Milburn, open salon. View from Mount Joe. This image has a lot going for it. We've got, of course, you see the beautiful color as soon as the image comes up, and the color is handled very nicely. You know, you can argue slightly a little oversaturated, but nothing that I think is garish looking. So it is what it is. It looks really nice. Um, your balance and exposure is handled really well. Look at the look at the sky. We have nothing that's really blown out. Even in your brighter tones, they're not truly blown out. And your reflection in the water is processed in a way so that it's exposed perfectly uh, for this image. Your position of elements in the frame. I like the diagonal nature. I love how it leads me in. I like how, you know, your sky, the being the clouds, everything leads me into this image. It's got an overall fantastic bounce and a really nice feel. Seven. Value number five. We've got nice, soft, muted light. You've done an excellent job in your exposure and your bright tones. 
I am going to ask, what is your focal point and where do you want my attention to go? Because for me, I find the most interesting part of, part of this dahlia is right here in the center portion. It's the one thing that's different than everything else. So this to me should be your focal point. Where's my eye go to more than anything? The brighter areas, are they overexposed? No, they're not. But would I open up the exposure in here a little bit? If this is gonna be where my eye wants to go and focus on, you've even positioned it in a place in the frame to do that, would I open up the exposure there a little bit more? Or is there a purpose to lead me to the bright leaves that are nice, but not as nice as this? The next thing is, your flower leads me to the right, we're closer to the right. We've got these void areas up in here. In fact, the background is starting to take on a little bit of a texture identity in the top left. Does that serve a purpose or not? Or would I eliminate that? I would probably crop more off the one side um, or would I just get in tighter, honestly, with this, with, with this, this image? I kind of like this petal right up here at the, the pointing up to the top left corner. I would like to include that. Well, how do I do that and eliminate some of the back? We're not shooting this straight on anyway. What if I took a half a step to the uh, two inches to the left and shoot on a diagonal nature here and then just, you know, dodge this up a little bit and, and open up the, the brightness here? I think it would be helpful. Seven. Pink and yellow dahlia. So I think the petals stand out very nicely. I will say I like the diagonal nature of the stem, and I think it's position center in the frame does work fine. I think your choice of color in the background, you know, being complementary to the flower, red and green, have a very positive visual effect on the eye, and it stands out very nicely. But my attention is going to be drawn to what's the most vibrant, the brightest, and that's the yellows in the frame. And the yellows are overexposed and blown out. And I can't even separate petal to petal in the yellow area. I do think that you need a little bit more contrast in the pink zone of this uh, overall presentation. Uh, you know, of, of the petals, I think we could use a little more contrast, which will make their edges stand out and a little more black point would make their edges stand out a little bit better. Um, six. Romanesco al fresco. <laughs> I love your title. <laughs> I pulled a tooth that had this kind of stuff all over it the other day. It was pretty gross, but anyway. Um, no, listen, I, I like your texture and, and, and that's happening here. I'm going to ask a question. We've got an overall very busy pattern. All right. Is there some sort of a pattern that stands out or is it just tight little stuff everywhere? You know, you've got your bigger cluster, your bigger cluster, your bigger cluster. And I'm sorry to those people on uh, Zoom who can't really see what I'm pointing to. Um, would I make one of those a focal point? Position it in the frame, perhaps at the junctions of the third or centered or something, and get in tighter. And by doing that, I would bring out even more detail and 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 give it more dynamics. As it is, it's just kind of a very tight pattern of little tight circular things everywhere with a little hint of triangular shapes. Uh, six. Provider. Selective focus keeps attention right where you want it. I think you've got a uh, everything in focus that I need to see is in focus. So hats off to you. Uh, I do like the separation of uh, the background and the rock ledge as it comes through. Uh, in your processing, I think you are a little bit on the flat side. I think you're flat in color. And I think you're flat in black point. You, um, and I understand that you are devoid of detail in some of the blacks over here. And you know what? I'm not bothered by it. It's only a little bit. I think what's more important is that you didn't blow out your whites. You're close, 
but you did not. Um, I don't care about detail up in the reflected uh, part of the head of the, of the fish. Um, but we, you know, our processing is leaving a little bit to be desired. So what would I do about that? I think that this is such an easy fix in levels. It's not funny. Open up a levels window. Um, and I would add my contrast and my black point there. Um, for those of you who do not know how to use that in Photoshop, you open up a levels window. If you're using a Mac, you, you click the option key. And don't release it, hold it down. And if you're using a PC, you click the Alt key and use the Option key and hold it down. And then what I would do is uh, click on the white triangle on the bottom of the histogram that opens up in the Levels window. Your screen will go black and the brightest thing in the frame will be the first white speck. What's going to be the first white speck? That. Do you need detail there? No. And the second white speck is going to be where? Here, you need detail there. Yes. So how can I make this pop a little bit more? We'll talk about that in a minute. So you can move your slider from right to left until this lights up and then you have to stop. If that lights up, I would keep going. As far as your black point goes, do the same thing. Click the option or alt key and then click and don't release it and click on the little black triangle under the levels window, which is gonna be on your right. And your screen will go white. And then the first black point will light up as you move your slider from left to right. But what's your first black point going to be? Here. If this is the way you captured it and this is riding up the left side of your Instagram, then you don't have detail there anyway. I would go a little further. If you did, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. So the next thing with contrast, the best way to add contrast is to under the little gray triangle that's under the levels window itself is a numeric box. And you click on that and then hit the down arrow key on your keyboard and it'll add some contrast. What will the contrast do? It'll bring out a little more definition in the feathers. It will bring out more saturation in your oranges and your reds and your yellows and even your blues. So the problem you're going to have here is that in this particular image, you're black, you're already riding up the left side of your frame and you're bright, you're already riding up the right side of your frame. So what do you do? Before I open it up in Photoshop, I'm going to go and I use Lightroom, use whatever you want, and shadows and highlights, I'm going to decrease some of the highlights and increase some of the shadows. So that's going to make my image look even flatter. But it will make it so the whites are not so bright and the darks are not so dark. And I'll get more detail. Now I'll open that up in Photoshop. If I want to do a little bit more, and I'm going to tell you, I probably would. I probably want to just select this section. I use a Nick software program called the uh, DXO, and in it, one of the programs is Vivesa. And with Vivesa, what I would do is I would click on this white area here. I would move a little slider to make a circle that gets bigger and smaller so that it just occupied that space right there. And then I would go over to my sliders that it provides me with, and I would go to brightness. And I would just decrease the brightness a little bit. And then this will get a little bit darker. It would start to match that. But it would get flatter. So then the next slider is contrast. I increase the contrast a little bit, and then it will look fairly normal again, only not as bright. So now since I opened up some shadows, I've got some detail in here. And since so I decreased some of the highlights, I've got some detail in here. Now my image still looks flat. But now when I go into Photoshop and I open up that levels window and I make those adjustments, I'm going to tell you right now, this image is going to pop a lot better. So, so that's what I would recommend for it. Seven. Washington Arch at night. Overall, it's got a very pleasing feel. I think the building separates nicely from the sky. You've got a nice layering effect from, you know, your arch to your tree to your, you know, uh, Empire State Building. Um, is there anything that I might do a little bit differently? Well, could I separate the Empire State from the tree a little bit? They're both the same color, parts of it. They're overlapping a lot. Get a really big dolly and go and move the tree to the left. All right, you can't do that, but could you take a step to the right and it would only help a little bit, but you probably, you don't want to merge the Empire State with th those lights, but I get it as much over as I could. Um, I think that will be helpful. That's one detail. The other thing is, 
where do you want my attention to go in your processing? On this bright part of the wall right here, would I tone that down somewhat? I think that would be helpful. When would I press the shutter? When the person is there or when the person was here? Because um, now they're kind of hands kind of moving out of what's going on. Seven. Submerged. So, you know, I like what's happening here. Some of the things I like about it, or I like how you're leading me into the center portion of the frame right here. I like what's happening here. I'm not so sure that it looks so great centered the way it is, because you've got something of interest here, something of interest here. That's not so interesting, top left corner. So for the people at home, lower right is interesting. I like how it leads me into the leaf and its reflection. I like, you know, the leaf is kind of centered in its reflection with a lot of dead space around it. Not so in love with that. The top left corner, you got the little inclusion of a little texture. Um, it's small and faint. Is it enough to occupy that much of the frame? I don't quite think so. You've got the next thing that's coming through this water mud layer on the right. That's a dark shadow. Does that add interest or not? Do you even know what it is, but does it help the composition? I don't think so. I would clone that out. I would probably take this off center. The next thing is how is the balance on the lighting on the leaf that's in reflection is great. The leaf that's above the layer, it's a little bright up in the middle. I'd like to see it tone that down a little bit. I'm going to go with a six. Male Cardinal. So placement of the cardinal in the frame is fine. I like the way the background goes blurry. Uh, I think you've got enough detail on enough of the cardinal that I'm satisfied with your depth of field. I am not so concerned with the tail. This is a difficult uh, image to get everything in focus. At this focal length, this magnification, you know, you probably shot this at at least F11, if not F16, and you still can't get the tail in focus. So I don't think you need a tail in focus for this magnification. Do I like this branch that's out of focus that runs right across my image that's in the foreground on the lower right side? I do not. Um, you know, in a competition, that's something that we need to be able to control. If we're just gonna pick our camera up and we see a cardinal point and shoot and take a picture, it is what it is. But if we're going to control the setup, then that needs to go. If we're going to make this work for competition, I think the bird's probably not moving. As long as you only take a step to the left, you know, can you, can you eliminate that twig on the right? I think you can. I'm going to tell you, if you can't, in Photoshop, content aware fill. You just, it's at the top on the right. I forgot what the, it's one of the first columns in Photoshop. It might be edit or file or whatever. You drop down, you're going to see content aware fill. It's about one third the way down. And with it, you just get your lasso tool. First you do is you get your lasso tool. You just go right like this, right around this, just along the outside edge around this, this out of focus branch. And you've selected just that. Then go up to, I think it's file. If it's not, you can figure it out very easily on your, on your software and go to content to one where fill and release and your computer in 15 seconds is going to recreate this for you. It'll be most likely better than cloning would have done and easier to do. And then it's going to give you a preview window to see if you like it. And if you do, you hit OK and boom, it's done. And you just deselect and you might have to flatten your image because it creates a layer or go back to your main layer um, if you want to keep all your layers. And if you don't like something, then you can easily just clone out the little section you don't like. But that's an easy fix for something like that. The next thing is, I think you're, you know, we don't have a lot of good details in the reds or in the yellows. So I do think we could process this to make this pop out a little bit better. Six. Sometimes it's only a matter of desaturating those colors and you'll, you'll get your textures back. You may not have actually blown them out. Five and six.
I think you've cropped it in an interesting way. I will say that it's up to what the viewer likes on whether they like such a merger between the two planes or not. Um, I do think that the separation of the tip of the plane on the, that's upside down from the plane that's right side up helps. I also think the fact that the two tail, uh, um, um, oh my God, not, not wings, what are they called? Um, I have, I'm having a senior moment. The what? The, whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about. You can all still make fun of me. It's quite all right. But you know that they're not lined up vertically the same. I will say, though, and you're processing, you're a little on the flat side. What do I mean by that? If you opened up a levels window and you look at your histogram, you're going to see that. Suppose this is a histogram, the whole image. On the right, you're not going to start until over there. You can make this brighter and not look so muddy by doing what I told you before and moving that white triangle to the point where the brightest thing in the image now lights up. Um, it's going to have a lot more pop. You know, in your processing being so dark, you're not even separating the, the two planes from themselves. So I think some work in processing would be helpful. Six. Northern Harrier on the hunt. Compositionally, really, really nice. Wing position, shutter speed, diagonal nature. I think your composition works great. I'm going to say that I think your processing here um, could use a, a, a little bit. What do I mean by that? I think some of your bright tones are a little on the bright side, whether it be the feet, these parts over here on, on, on the thorax. Um, you know, they're kind of almost washed out white. The sky is bright, and I would probably look better if we toned the sky's brightness down a little bit. I think it would make the, the bird stand out a, a little bit better because my eye is moving off to the bright sky a little bit too much. Six. So, I'm sorry, seven. All reflections. You're keeping me totally within the reflections itself. So what do we have? We've got some vertical structs of the trunks. Um, and they change from left to right. You've got the, on the top of the tree on the left side is different than on the right side. You do have a focal point. You've got that bright orange reflection. It's up at the junction of the thirds. I think it's a pleasing place to put it. So I think that works very nicely. I think your image is cropped very, you know, very well. Uh, the cluster of trees that you have, you've got a lot of brighter trunks coming in, um, which I think complicate your image a little bit, but I still think it's very well done. And I think that becomes a little bit of personal taste. So I'm not going to put that into the scoring. Um, a little simpler pattern in another reflection somewhere else may simplify uh, the final presentation. Um, it's still very nice the way it is, seven. Skipper. All right, so I heard somebody behind me say, wow. And I agree. The question is, why did you say wow? And I want to talk about that because I think that's going to be helpful to the club. There's something that made you say wow, and probably you all said wow, because I said it in my head. And what it is, is first of all, you look at the composition. It's very well done. It's positioned so nicely in the frame. You've got something of interest that leads me up and through. You've got selective focus such that, you know, the, the you know the flower the main part of the uh, of it and and the, and the and 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 the the non-flowering part of the plant is in focus. I don't care about the third bud in the background. The the the, the you know the the butterflies in focus. The nature story. The proboscis is doing what it's doing. The antenna. Everything is really well done. The selective focus keeps the background so simple that your attention stays exactly where the maker wants it to stay. And that's hats off to the maker. The processing is the next thing that gives you that wow factor. You've got a great white point. White doesn't have to be the color white. It's the brightest thing in the frame. You've got a great black point, which is the darkest thing in the frame. And you've got great contrast throughout this. So the processing is exquisite. The composition is exquisite. And the processing is exquisite. Five. 
Uh, seven. Two. Seven. But everything they did just jumps out and hits you right in the face. Very nice composition. I love how you lead me on the left side, how you take me over here, how you bring me in. You've elected to process this without a tremendous amount of contrast in the sky. And I think that gives great anatomy to the buildings. So I'm glad that the contrast throughout this image is not equal throughout. Um, you have much more in the building on the left, the lamppost, and the buildings on the lower right. And it works very well together. Seven. Exploration. Yeah, listen, you have a, a great leading line that takes me up into this. You've done a very nice job with overall processing on what you have. I am going to ask you a question is, do you like the bald sky or not? It definitely works and it looks good. Would it look better if it wasn't bald? What would be different about it if it wasn't bald? Well, if it wasn't bald, it would separate much nicer from the building that's right here, right above the individual, right? Um, and that would have more of an identity. Well, how, what do you do about that? Well, you know, your camera is not gonna capture the tonal range here from the dark textures inside this tunnel to the bright sky that's out there in totally different light. It's not gonna happen. So what do you do? Tripod mounted, more than one exposure. And if you don't really move, you don't even have to be tripod mounted to make it work, but I do suggest that. Take three exposures, and then in Lightroom, go up to the top left side, I think it's under Edit, Photo Merge, HDDR. So in Lightroom, you go to the grid mode, you select your three exposures, so they're all selected, and then you go up to, I think it's Edit, but I could be wrong, down to Photo Merge, and then a little side, little drop down opens up, and you release on HDR, and then hit OK. And in 30 seconds, your software is gonna do it for you. You probably won't have to do anything. And then you could just dodge and burn a little bit and, and make this totally come together. So when I shoot these, I shoot more than one exposure. Now you may say, well, what about the guy? The guy's moving, you're gonna get three pictures of the guy. And you know what? You may or may not. And you may not because it's gonna take one exposure for the sky. The only problem is, the guy's overlapping with the bright part of the building. So it's probably going to take the sky and the building, the center part of the building, from one exposure. It'll take this middle part of, the, of you know, what's out in the daylight as a second exposure, and what's in the tunnel will be from another exposure. So you may or may not make it work. If not, then you can just overlap layers and correct it yourself later. Seven. <clears throat> waiting for a meal. Okay, overall, very nice. I think you've exposed it as well as you're going to do. This is an image where you're going to get one exposure. Otherwise, it's probably not going to work doing multiple exposures. You've painstakingly working to decrease the exposure. It looks to me like what's up here in the sky. And I think you've done a good job with it. Um, I do like the fact that we don't have good black point texture up in here. It keeps my focus straight on the baby Robins just like you uh, want it to be. You know, you do have some little out of focus stuff here. It's not enough to bother me. They purposely build their nests hidden. There's not a lot you're gonna do unless you're gonna go get a string and tie this back and then photograph and then release it later. Um, if you're ever gonna do that kind of stuff, you gotta make sure there's not a cat in the area watching what you're doing. Otherwise do not draw attention to a nest. The other thing is don't stay on nest too long because if the parents are not feeding, you run the risk of uh, having the birds not make it. So you have to watch the parental change in, in, in feeding pattern. I like to watch the nest first for about a half hour to an hour to see how often the adults come in so that when I'm setting up, I'm not breaking that, that uh, pattern. I'm um, seven. Peekaboo. The maker has put a lot of thought into getting tight and drawing my attention into something. I do like what's happening here very much. You gave me some space on the top. You know, the head is pleasingly placed. The eye has good separation from the neck. Um,
Do you know the balance on the left side? Uh, would I add more space, take away a little bit more space? Or is it fine the way it is? I think it's fine the way it is. I would definitely in the, shoot it so that I showed all of the neck on the left side. And then at the computer, decide if I want to crop it or not, more or less, or leave it the way it is. So I have options. We're a little dark vertically in some of the water right here in the insert in the insert of the curve of the neck um, as well as around over here it's darker than everywhere else and we have almost a little light shadow around the neck over here so if we're decreasing exposure on the background make sure we're taking it in evenly everywhere i can't say for sure so i'm going to overlook it in scoring but i'm a little suspicious so just make sure you're taking it into your edges if you're going to decrease one layer versus another Seven. Cosmos. Lighting is beautiful. How the light passes through the petals is really well handled. Um, choice of background doesn't really bring out the full strength of what's going on here. Because the background is fairly similar to the petals. So it definitely has a layer that separates, but would the petal stand out even better if we tone down the color or the brightness of the background or change the color of the background? Well, that's pretty subjective. So that's more of a food for thought comment. The next thing food for thought is the little spider web right here on the lower right side. Would I clone that out? Do I like it? Do I think it adds strength to the story? Um, again, your interpretation, not the scoring. Something to consider. Seven. End of a long day. So you've got gorgeous lighting. You've got great elements. What are those elements? Why do I ask that question? You will understand in a minute. You've got the people laying here, and you've got the main structure that brought you to that location in the first place. So you've positioned it off center. So in your background, you're off center with your, your main subject, this big structure. Your people are centered to off center to the right, and so does the bench they're on. Your darker clouds are to the right. So you're getting this image to be more heavily weighted to the right side. And the left side has some interest, but it's starting to become a little devoid of interest. So what would I do about that? Would I increase the dominance of the leading line by standing a little further to the left? Because if I just crop this, I can make it a square format, and that works too, because the silhouetted building in the background is kind of cool. It plays nicely with everything. I think we're getting a little bit flat on the left side, so would I make this a square format or step further to the left and keep it in a horizontal format. It's up to you. Um, if I knew the people, would they allow me to kind of get higher and stand over them and shoot it as a vertical, which would really be cool. But that doesn't mean it's not cool this way. But you better know the people or else you, that's how you wind up having to come see me as a patient. <laughs> Seven. Ice flow. So we've got this ice flow that is in this water. It's got a reflection. Um, we have a background that's very simple. It's devoid of anything. And how does the ice flow stand out against the background? Awesome, in my opinion. So here we've got an image that's got some devoid areas. I think they serve a purpose. The whole thing leads me more to the right. I've got more space on the right. I think the balance of this particular image works Great. I want to justify that because I just complained about that a little bit in the previous image. Here, I think it works. I think it serves more of a purpose because um, this is really simplicity versus non-simplicity. Uh, your lighting is beautiful. Your, your, your black point, your contrast is beautifully processed. Seven. Nine. 
seven, eight. Seven, seven, eight, nine, You know, my only comment here would be to kind of decrease some of the exposure in here, we'll bring out some of the textures a little bit more. I'm going to go with an eight. 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 Seven. Eight. Eight. Nine. Open salon, honorable mention, provider, I mean, so presented. Fall Reflections, Natalie Gregorio. Ready for takeoff, Peter Schmeichel. Exploration, Lenny McDonald. Waiting for a meal, Ryan Kirshner. Cosmos, Arlene Sobrenzetti. End of a long day, Peter Schmidtko. And equal merit, view from Mount Joe, Ryan Kirshner. Skipper, Arlene, Arlene Sobrenzetti. And Ice Flow, Lenny McDonald. That is all. Stop share. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everybody, for allowing me to comment. Does anybody here you, have any questions? Anybody you yell at me. any questions?